Business is pleased to present the 2023 40 Under 40 Awards. Celebrating Utah's rising stars under the age of 40. Today's event is sponsored by Digital Bytes Production and Design. Lux Catering and Events. Regions Blue Cross Blue Shield of Utah. Web. Beehive Meals. CBRE. Kaza. GPS Capital Markets. Holland and Hart LLP. Key Bank. Kizik. Landslide Political. Larry H. Miller Company. Lucid Software. Michael Best. Nightingale College. O.C. Tanner. Onset Financial. Opt Connect. Recursion. Trader Solutions Day Trade for Good. 20 in Creek. Utah Jazz. And Zion's Bank. And now, please welcome your Master of Ceremonies, Executive Vice President of Marketing and Communication for Waterford.org, Kim Fisher. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It sounds like everybody's having a good time chatting it up. We are getting ready to get started. So I want to thank all of you for joining us to honor and recognize the 2023 Utah Business 40 Under 40. Let's give them a hand. Today, we are focusing on the state's up and coming business and community leaders. This year marks the 21st annual 40 Under 40 program, and since its inception, nearly 850 people have been recognized for their accomplishments. 40 Under 40 epitomizes the talent, vibrancy, and diversity of Utah's business community. The honorees are people who have made great contributions to their companies, their communities, and their causes. The Utah Business 40 Under 40 class of 2023 is a diverse group, including rising stars of the corporate world, successful entrepreneurs, designers, and passionate performers and entertainers. This year's recipients here in Utah, they show exactly what the economic diversity looks like and how it's going to propel the state's success well into the future. A little bit about Utah Business. Utah Business provides award-winning in-depth journalism on the businesses and forefronts of our nation's economy. Their print and digital publication reaches executives all across the state and provides live, deep-dive events on the industry shaping our future. I'd like to introduce the representatives from Utah Business that we have on stage with us here to congratulate this year's honorees. Please join me in welcoming the new publisher of Utah Business, Burke Olson. And we are now happy to hear from the editor and chief of Utah Business, Melanie Jones. Good 
Good afternoon. On behalf of Utah Business, I would like to welcome you to our 40 Under 40 Luncheon, where we will shine a spotlight on the rising stars in Utah's business community. But first, I'd like to offer a personal thank you to Kim Fisher, Executive Vice President of Marketing and Communication with Waterford.org for being here with us today to celebrate our 40 Under 40 honorees. I would also like to recognize our premier sponsors, Digital Bites Production and Design, Lux Catering and Events, Regents Blue Cross Blue Shields of Utah, and Webb. To our primary sponsors as well, we greatly appreciate all of your support in making this event happen. When you mention millennials, I think most people have an idea in their heads of what a typical millennial looks and acts like. But just look around the room right now. 1980 is usually considered the starting birth year for the millennial generation. That means the oldest of the millennials are just barely turning 40 years old. Our 40 Under 40 program right now captures a moment where millennials are no longer the junior employees who are stressing out their baby boomer bosses. <laughs> Millennials are CEOs, senior executives, entrepreneurs, and innovators. You are well into your careers. You've learned lessons, achieved successes, and made real measurable impacts. You've worked hard, and you're now in senior leadership positions or running your own companies. The truly exciting thing is that you are just getting started. You're not even halfway through your careers, yet you still have dreams and ambitions and goals that you are striving to accomplish. Where will you be in 10 years, in 20 years? Wherever life's winding path takes you, we at Utah Business will be watching as you help shape our state's bright future. And I know that our state's future is in good hands. This year, we received 246 nominations for our 40 Under 40 program, which means that these 2023 honorees truly are the standouts in Utah's business community. And now I'm pleased to introduce you to our 2023 40 Under 40 honorees. It's an honor to be able to highlight the success and accomplishments of these remarkable individuals. On behalf of Utah Business and all those here today, we congratulate you, Utah Business's 40 Under 40. Web is a full service event production company based right here in Salt Lake City. Every one of their events begins with a vision and they work together to bring out the best in technology, creative and staging to create a brand experience unlike any other. Whether virtual or live, Web is one of the most creative and innovative event companies in the country. Rather than say more, let's show you what they've been up to. Jealous me out of what I want when I wash. Jealous me out of what I want when I wash. 
jealous that that is their work because that looks awesome. All right. Big, great, big thank you to Webb for all of their great work and support of Utah business events. Let's give them a round of applause. It is now time for the recognition portion of our awards luncheon. We had the pleasure of photographing and interviewing this group of honorees in preparation for this event. We learned about topics like their go-to business strategies, the most rewarding thing about their jobs and their inspirations. And this group of 40 under 40 honorees did not disappoint. We look forward to sharing each of their stories with you today. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Please turn your attention to the video screens. Now, working with my wife has been wonderful in a lot of ways, but it's been really fun to build this company with her. Uh, some of the advantages are being able to spend time with her, be able to use her strengths and really time into my strengths. For me, I'm a digital marketer uh, by trade. For her, she's more of a stay-at-home mom. With Beehive Mills, we've been able to take both of our strengths and merge them in together where I worry about sales and marketing. She worries about you know, making the mills, the prep, the production side. Being in the food industry, you know, the food and the impact that food can have is definitely the most rewarding thing. You know, food has a positive impact in so many different ways, but also just the community around us. You know, we're given an opportunity when something happens, we're able to step in and at least provide, you know, a temporary relief through food. How I kind of got into entrepreneurship in general, it really started from a younger age. I started with really like my dad was very entrepreneurial and really supportive with everything that I was doing. And I honestly just started out just uh, uh, mowing lawns and just going around the neighborhood and just trying to make a little bit of extra money. This really became my destiny just in general. So, and I really enjoy it. I get to solve very interesting problems and it's, it's, a, it's a blast. Our go-to-business strategy, it's really focused around small business and it's really focused around Salt Lake City as well. What we're trying to do is just align people with just opportunity and that's really what we're doing. That's the fun of it and that's the part of the job I really enjoy in general. We're working with people and we're trying to solve problems and it's, it's just a lot of fun. I was in the process of filling out applications for grad school and taking the GREs and all of that fun stuff. I decided to go to a career fair, got a job offer from a company out in Wisconsin that sounded a whole lot better than more school. We were out there for several years and, and I just fell into uh, working for this electronic medical record company, leading what they did uh, with the exchange of information between uh, between facilities. Over that time, I was involved in the creation of this not-for-profit organization, Carry Quality. They reached out to me and, and asked, hey, we're looking for a new executive director. Uh, would you be interested? And I absolutely jumped at it. Seeing directly from doctors and from patients the improvements in care from what my organization does without them even knowing that it was there in the first place is incredibly rewarding. I always wanted to be involved in politics, I, you know, since I was a little kid, you know, when you ask little kids what they want to be when they grow up, uh, my answer was, you know, president or a politician, and, which is a very weird answer. Uh, so I've always been driven to participate in, in uh, government. Um, so yeah, that's why I decided to run for office. I overcome a lot of challenges in my life, and I, I think that it's about believing in myself, believing that my accent or my skin color or my immigrant background or all of these things are actually assets in my life and not things that, uh, you know, negatives. And so just thinking through that, uh, believing in myself and going for it is, is what put me where I am today and hopefully keep on moving ahead. My father, ever since I was a little girl, he would always say, you will be a bank executive. I didn't even know what that meant. 
I wanted to be a teacher, a hairdresser, you know, something that you feel like uh, as a little girl, um, it, you see in front of you kind of more, more frequently rather than a bank executive. I really feel that my, my path and where I'm at has, was really driven and kind of orchestrated by, by my dad. Education was key to him. Uh, being an independent woman was key to him for me as well. My go-to business strategy is quite simple. It's people first. Our people, our employees, they're at the forefront of every decision that I make. So it is my responsibility to create a inclusive, supportive environment that enables them to thrive. Ever since we were little kids, I was raised in a small uh, farming community here in, in Utah. Our parents would never allow us to say, I can't afford that. It was, how can I afford that? So for fun, we worked. I've had uh, the opportunity to be surrounded by a lot of amazing people in my life. My wife definitely inspires me. She's an amazing woman, lots of fun to be around. You know, being a, a spouse of an entrepreneur can be challenging and she's been so supportive and loving along the way. I'd also say my parents, my mom and dad, they're the perfect example of hard work and sacrifice. And then my two brothers and business partners, Rhett and Lloyd Roberts, they're a wonderful example to me. We've been in business together ever since we were little kids. Really any success that I've had, I've, I owe it to these guys. I think my most exciting professional accomplishment has been, it's unique to being a lawyer, but it's been building a book of business on my own and getting my own clients and sort of creating those relationships and, and then maintaining them and keeping them and providing good service to people and feeling like I'm a part of these people's teams. That's been what's been most exciting throughout my career. I strive to excel at just sort of building up everybody around me. I uh, think that life is most fun when everybody's sort of doing what they love and succeeding at it. So anything I can do to help people figure out what that is and then help them succeed at it, that's what I want to excel at. That's what I want to be able to do for people. I worked construction out of high school. Yeah, after that, I, I just truly fell in love with the construction industry and building things and the reward with building those projects. And so, you know, found a degree up at Weber State, uh, got my construction management degree and have been in construction ever since. Obviously, I believe in community and in construction, that's a big part of who we are, right? You know, I feel like giving back is, is a good way to contribute back to the community and, and also kind of raise that next level so I you know I coach uh, coach my son's lacrosse team and so it's it's fun to, to be able to coach those boys and and help give them uh, some leadership and some um, structure you know also you know give back to people that are less fortunate so I do believe in uh, community and it's been something that's great and is rewarding on multiple levels housekeeping for all of our honorees. Once you see yourself come up on screen, make sure you line up right over here. Lynette's waving her hand. It just keeps things going a little more quickly. All right, so on behalf of Adam Jackson, co-founder and chief commercial officer of Beehive Meals, please welcome to the stage his parents, Janet and Lynn Jackson. of our honorees feel free to come and line up over here as well all right here they are let's give them a hand COO and co-founder of Dakota Group. And from 
care quality, please welcome to the stage their executive director, Alan Swenson. Congratulations to Alejandro Puy, who is being recognized for his work as a Salt Lake City Council member, as well as co-founder of Landslide Political. Give a warm welcome to Andrea Verkic Pranich. She's the executive director for Morgan Stanley. I'd like to welcome Trina Roberts accepting the award today on behalf of her husband, Ben Roberts, co-founder and COO of Loan Pro. Next, please welcome to the stage Betsy Voter, partner of Michael Best. Yantis, Vice President of BHI. All right, congratulations once again to this impressive group of honorees. Now let's turn uh, let's learn more about the next group of honorees we're recognizing today. Turn your attention to the video screens. Personally, I think biggest challenges for me that I've had to overcome have been just my real lack of wanting to be in the spotlight, which has meant that I sometimes shy away from opportunities to be in the spotlight. I'd rather just kind of be in the background working really hard. And so I've had to allow myself to be kind of put out in the spotlight a little bit more when I get promoted or when I take on management positions and leadership roles. And that's been a really interesting challenge for me. The most rewarding thing about my job has probably been just being able to find out just what I'm capable of. I'm often put in situations that are completely unfamiliar to me. I'm in a you know role that is not something I ever thought I'd be doing. Being able to find success there has been really, really fun and rewarding for me. I was just elected partner at my firm and I really want to progress in that role, you know, learn to develop better client skills, manage cases work with associates, but also at the same time learn how to be an effective lawyer, but also learning how to have an effective life outside of the career, you know, embrace the hobbies, the things I feel like I've got to sacrifice for to get where I am, you know. I'd say the most rewarding thing about my job is it changes daily. There's always a new task. There's always a new thing to think about. There's always a new case. There's always a new area of inquiry to understand. I mean, that's one thing I love best about being a lawyer is it's never the same. Every day is a new challenge. I mean, that's one of the hardest things about it, but it's the thing I like about it most. So marketing for me has kind of been a journey. I actually started early on doing photography. I think I learned a lot about people during that time and, and what makes people tick. And that's really what got me interested in marketing and, and especially digital marketing. It's an adventure to to discovery and, and help consumers find the products they're looking for. I think 2023 is going to be a, a big year. At Kizik, we have really high growth goals and you know expansion internationally and, and opening up a retail store are really exciting things for me. And I think just personally, I think it's just for me, you know, my, my family and, and continuing to watch them grow and, and be a part of their lives. I have three young kids and just the little moments 
uh, that I get to be a part of with our lives is, is something I'm really looking forward to along the way as well. When I went to law school and graduated, I had these incredible female mentors, older women attorneys who were well into their practice or retiring, who just took me under their wing and like helped me learn what it means to be an attorney, what it means to be a good advocate, and I am just committed to paying that back to the younger generation who's coming up. In 2023, I will take the helm of Women Lawyers of Utah as president, and this is an incredible organization whose goal is to improve the lives of women and women attorneys in Utah. And so I'm really looking forward to that, continuing this incredible 40-year organization that, that came before me and helping guide it into the next year and then be able to pass it on to the next board. Being negative doesn't solve anything and it really just makes the matter worse. And so being positive, being solution minded is crucial to the success of our company and just the success of that moment in the day to be able to get over the battle that is at hand and to be able to work together as a team. And I think it just makes the day better. I think the most rewarding thing about my position as co-founder of Leave Room for Dessert Eateries is the impact that myself and my dad and my other co-founder are able to have on not just our associates, but also our guests on a daily basis. It's one of the few industries that has such a human interaction with basically everything that we do. I mean, it's so crucial to our success. Our commitment is to inspire associates, thrill our guests and enrich our community and inspire our associates is first because they're the ones that make it all happen at the end of the day. One of the most exciting things I think I've done at the company has just been being a part of the growth from the beginning. Literally this business started with the proverbial one person in a, in a garage type uh, of, a, of a startup now to hundreds of thousands of customers and locations, hundreds of employees uh, that we work with today. It's been more of a process than it has been a single event that has been exciting. Uh, for me in my career. The most rewarding thing is looking around the room across my peers and seeing all of the lives that are impacted by the business that we provide. I've been the benefactor of people that are willing to reach out and be good tutors and mentors to me. And I, I hope in some small way I can play that role to other people. I went down very different paths through my life. I served a Mormon mission, came home, I was in pre-med, I was working for a large healthcare provider. I did all these different things. And through all of those experiences, those different paths that I took, I realized there was just something that was missing for me. That human connection, the experiences that I wanted others to experience, and I could never figure out how to connect through to that. And when I quit school, <laughs> and I quit work all at once in this big display of madness. A friend of mine said, hey, would you like to come and work for my company? That's my business partner today. And I believe that just like trusting in that experience has gotten me into this space today where I am today. If I were talking to my 18 year old self, I would say focus on relationships with people. Business comes, deals come and go, but the relationships that you build with people transcend all of that. And after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, looking back, you realize that you can't remember all the details of the deals you did, but you absolutely can remember the relationships and the moments you shared with people in business and just in life generally. Who inspires me most and why? My wife, Monica, for sure. She is a saint and she is the hardest working person I know. When I start to feel a bit sorry for myself, I see 
you know, how she's able to manage the issues and the situations and the problems, that gives me confidence that I can do it too. Those are some well thought out responses from this group of honorees. So let's go ahead and meet the people who made them. First, congratulations and welcome to Brett Evans, partner with Snell and Wilmer LLP. And from Kizik, please give a warm welcome to their VP of Marketing, Brett Swenson. Welcome to the stage, Britt Merrill, attorney from Holland and Hart. Please give a warm welcome to Brooks Kirchheimer, co-founder of Leave Room for Dessert Eateries. Next up is Chris Baird, President and CEO with Opt Connect. Let's give a warm welcome to the stage, Christopher Sanchez, Managing Partner of Lux Catering and Events. stage from CBRE, Director of Global Advisory, Dave Bauman. Let's give them all a round of applause. now time to do a fun giveaway. You may have noticed uh, the little blue tickets in your name badge. Well, Kizik has graciously donated $150 gift cards, and we're going to give the first of them away right now. Don't be mad at me if it's not your name, all right? Once, you, uh, once I call your ticket and number, come up, show us your voucher, and Melanie is going to meet you with your gift. All right, ticket number 459-534. I hear a lot of awes. Is there any yay? <laughs> okay, we'll choose another one. Wait, was there a yay? Get on up here. Come on up and get your prize. Congratulations. <laughs> right over here. There we go. Congratulations and a big thank you to Kizik. Now let's hear from our next group of honorees. Please, once again, turn your attention to the video screens. Success to me looks like your input equaling your output. Um, I see too many people where they're putting a lot of effort into something and it seems like they're running on a hamster wheel not getting anywhere. You know, success can look like so many different forms, but as long as the effort you're putting in is getting you the desired outcome, I would say that's success. We've always understood from day one that human capital is our number one asset. So when we're trying out to grow a team or grow a division or anything we're trying to do, the first thing we start is getting the right people. Once you have the right people, a lot of good can happen. What I've found is being a business owner and entrepreneur, the one thing that's been more rewarding than I thought it would be was the impact you have on people's lives. And growing our agency from four guys in an attic to now 65 employees who have families that they have to feed and knowing that we've created a company that provides opportunities and livelihoods for all those people is probably the thing I take the most pride in. I served a mission for the LDS Church in Russia. 
And when I was there learning the language, I realized how important language was in connecting with people around the world. And I realized that that's really one of the most important things I think that humanity needs is stronger connection across borders. And language is a key way to do that. The most rewarding part of my job is definitely seeing a problem, uh, a real world problem that affects people and being able to talk with them, to understand it, to have empathy, and then find ways to solve the problem and then put that into motion, make it happen, release it, give it to people and see their lives being impacted for the better. Justice for all is really important to me as a concept because everyone deserves a good shot in court. I think we're really fortunate that we live in a country that uh, provides protections for people that need help, uh, particularly when they're at low points of their lives. And it's important for me that lawyers use their power and privilege to help their community and help the people that really need it the most. The advice I would have for my younger self is to read more, read more history, read more philosophy, anything you get your hands on, read. Have patience, uh, stand up for other people. Have the courage to be who you are and give everyone the time of day. Everybody that comes your way deserves to be heard. Give them that shot. I wanted to be able to make a difference in the world. That was my primary motivation at 18. And I initially went into history because my thought was learning the lessons of history can help you become a better individual. And I thought somehow there's a way that I can take those lessons I learned from history to transmute those into the general populace and help everyone elevate. I think education is a catalyst for becoming the best versions of ourselves. Whether it's building new knowledge or skills or simply enhancing who we are as individuals and the way that we think, education is a catalyst for change. And so one of the great joys that I get out of my job from when I was 18 until now has been the idea that I wanted to help people become whoever they wanted to become, the best version of whoever that looked like. And through this current opportunity and through the school and, and through education generally, I think people can. The most rewarding part of my job, I feel like it's really two part. From the consumer side, since we do make consumer goods, I love seeing our customers take charge of their health, consume our products, change their lifestyles, get more energy, feel great. And then as a manager, I love seeing my employees develop and grow and flourish and take on new opportunities and challenges. The advice I would give my younger self would be to probably be more kind to myself. Understand that life in general is more about progress and less about perfection. Really taking the wins and celebrating them and just not being so hard on myself. When I was 18, I had a certain vision for where I'd probably be in my life, and I'd say that I am in a much better situation than I ever could have imagined or dreamed because uh, I kind of took the scenic route. Big thing for me was learning from supervisors and managers I had in my early 20s and whatnot who did some awesome things and did some things that I think weren't so awesome. And I remember, and I, I kind of internalized how I felt at those times and thought forward and thought, you know what, someday, if I'm ever in a situation where I'm leading people like they're leading me, I want to mimic the times that they made me feel good and uh, avoid at all costs the, the negatives so that people don't have to feel the same way I did. I had a very 
a non-linear path to experience design. I studied architecture in college and thought I would be an architect. But the interesting thing about architecture is it's all about how human beings engage with their environment. That foundationally led to a lot of interesting career possibilities. I started as a research consultant and what I really loved about the field was that it requires engaging with human beings. So it requires building relationships with with people and, and being curious about their lives and understanding the way that what makes us tick and what makes people feel successful in their work and in their lives and what matters to them. That was really something that I was drawn to and something that I found was very rewarding for me. One of the most rewarding things about what I do is being able to help people be happier at work. I'm, I'm a marketer at heart and getting to put that to work at Motivocity has been incredible because we focus on how do we help grow great cultures. And for the first time in my career, I'm working for a really fun product. As far as what's rewarding to me as a marketing leader, it is so fun to be able to help people look through a different lens. When people come to me and ask for advice or insights about what they should do with their career, I find that one of the things that I've gotten good at with practice is helping people pivot their, uh, their perspective so that they can see their challenges or problems or opportunities in a new way. And that's been a really great part of being a marketing leader. Let's meet this next group of honorees. Please give a round of applause to Suzanne Viewig, who is accepting the award today on behalf of Devin Deaton, partner of Max Connect Digital. Congratulations and welcome to the stage, Dr. Jacob Burtis, co-founder and VP of product strategy, strategy for Emerson, acquired by IXL Learning. Let's give a warm welcome to Grant Miller, public defender with Salt Lake Legal Defender Association. to welcome and congratulate Jeffrey Olson, acting president of Nightingale College. Please give him a round of applause. Next, let's welcome Jessica Arias, executive director of marketing, portfolio, and social media at USANA Health Sciences. Congratulations. Congratulations and welcome to the stage, Joseph Bart Vanuncio Arrington, founder and CEO of Beacon Sleep Solutions, as well as academic physician operations at Intermountain Health. Next, please give a warm welcome to Lindsay Martin, director of user experience at Lucid Software. Let's give her a hand, she wasn't able to make it. And please welcome to the stage, Logan Mallory, Vice President of Marketing at Motivocity. Congratulations. All right, let's give that group of honorees another round of applause. All right, you see the blue tickets next to me. That means it's time to pull out your tickets again and give away another $150 Kizik voucher. That number is 459-617.
Do I hear a yay? Going once, going twice. All right, we're going to pull another. Oh, I heard if she's coming or he's coming. All right, congratulations. Come on up to the stage. All right, congrats to you. By the way, their shoes are incredible, so enjoy that $150. Now let's turn our attention to the video screens to hear from our next group of honorees. The most rewarding part of my job is building an organization that's truly changing a system that's frankly the sickest patient on the planet that's U.S. healthcare. I love working at Nomi every single day to fix a, fix a system that just needs to be fixed because we all deserve a better, better access to low-cost healthcare. My go-to business strategy is really simple. Uh, deliver new innovation, solving a problem I care about, drive massive adoption of it, earn really passionate customers for what we do, and control our destiny in terms of how we serve our customers and how we build a profitable business going forward. And when we do all those things together, it turns out you can have a pretty magical time building a great business. What success looks like to me, for Nomi, is to rebuild U.S. healthcare at half the cost. Uh, we deserve it as a society, as a community, as a business community, and frankly, as the members of the country that we live in. And uh, we're not going to stop until we do. What drew me to the industry was, I was at law school up at the U. I was doing a fair amount of environmental natural resource law and getting an understanding of the electric utilities. Started working at a not-for-profit that was dealing with electric utility issues. And I thought the industry was fascinating. The most rewarding part of my job is working as part of a team, feeling like everyone is really chipping in, carrying their share of the weight, having everyone on the team synced up on you know, what the game plan is and executing it. There's a lot of things that we can't change, but there's a lot of things that we can be very effective at if we work as a team. I've actually been in this industry for over 20 years, working at a dealership that my father was managing, washing trailers, picking up the lot, you know, picking up trash, getting the guys coffee. <laughs> it's really the only industry that I've been a part of. It's, it's just what I've done my whole life. I feel it's important to be a boots on the ground style leader because you can't get a pulse on what your team is really feeling, what the culture is within each team's dynamic, unless you're there, unless you observe it. It also shows uh, that you're, you're committed uh, to what they're doing, uh, that you're not somebody who's just sitting in an office somewhere remotely, uh, making decisions um, that affect their lives and their enjoyment and their job satisfaction without understanding or having empathy for where they're coming from. had a really great opportunity to work in a lot of different disciplines and I think part of what I do uh, or at least the problem solving that I try to bring to my everyday work is informed by all of these different industries that I've worked for in the past and, and the different experiences I have. At the end of the day I feel like a lot of what we do is just problem solving so if you can break down problems into smaller chunks and find strategies to uh, solve those smaller problems, it leads to big solutions. 2023 is going to be a great year, especially for COSM. We are literally on the verge of redefining the way that the world experiences content uh, and immersive experiences. This year is going to be very exciting as we progress towards that, and I really hope that the wider public uh, learns of what we're doing at COSM, and they're able to experience it for themselves. The attitude I had even when I was 18 is someone who always said yes when there was an opportunity, even if I thought I would fail. I'm not surprised that I took a bunch of risks. I'm not surprised that 
I had some wins along the way, but I'm definitely surprised in the industry I'm in. I had no idea that I'd be working in crypto. I had no idea that I'd be working in finance on the level that I am. I had no idea I could have the impact in politics that I have today. None of those things I thought were possible. People think products are the assets and really people are always the assets. And without a strong team, you've got nothing. I like to start with community. I think it's the, the, the starting place. And then if you have a great product, you know, that just is like the icing on the, on the top. But I think any good team will push any good idea rather than a good product being the basis for doing something. When I was 18, my family would oftentimes provide advice by way of the famous quote, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. At the time, that was a very honorable goal. When I was 18, it fell a million miles away. And now fast forward, the work that we get to do on a daily basis is so exciting and engaging that I, I just feel so fortunate and, and love what I get to do. The most rewarding part about working at the Larry H. Miller Company is the privilege that I have to work with a team that is smart, collaborative, and hardworking. The company is also always evolving, and therefore the work is, which keeps it challenging and exciting. It's also extremely rewarding seeing the philanthropic efforts that Gail does within our communities that we do business in. So I ended up in tech because I really loved the pace of change. I started my career doing government subcontracting work and there was a lot of good we were doing and I was really passionate about that space, but I wanted to move faster. I didn't want to wait till the next code cycle to be able to release something in three years. I wanted to be able to keep iterating and making incremental progress to really create the change that I, I knew we needed as we move forward as an industry. I feel like I have a long way till 40, but after 40, I would really love to continue to grow along with the tech industry. I want us to push us to have more inclusive leadership across gender, across ethnicity, across race, and get to continue to grow my skills into new spaces to start learning things like data engineering or machine learning engineering and get to develop those teams and those capabilities so we can start to paint a new future for the tech industry. I worked in a bridal shop when I was in college, worked there for a few years, fell in love with the event process, kind of put it on the back burner as I was raising my family, but circled back when we saw an opportunity. There was, it was formerly Heritage Gardens, so we saw an opportunity to build it up, create a new experience for people, luxury experience in the state of Utah, and be a part of events again. I am new in the entrepreneurial world personally. Of course, I've supported my husband through his Walker Edison journey. But for me, it's presented a lot of challenges that I wasn't anticipating. One has been getting out of my own way a little bit and trusting my instincts. I mean, imposter syndrome, that, that comes into play a ton. That's been a challenge that I've had to overcome. A nice crowd right there. All right, please give a warm welcome to Matt Richards, Chief Operating Officer at Haugen RV Group. <laughs> Next, welcome Matthew Allred, Senior Marketing Director with COSM. Congratulations. Trader Solutions Day Trade for Good.
Congratulations and welcome to the stage, Matthew Keenan, Vice President of Strategy for the Larry H. Miller Company. Recursion, their director of engineering, Maureen Makes. Congratulations. <laughs> and now let's invite to the stage the founder and CEO of 20 and Creek, Megan Bonham. another big round of applause. Okay, please once again turn your attention to the video screens to learn about our next group of honorees. I'm someone who follows purpose and I plan for impact and I take the responsibility that I have as a trusted voice for the OC Tanner Institute very seriously in that I get to inform and educate and really empower organizations with what employees really need and want out of their workplace in order to thrive and do their very best work. This has been a very challenging era of isolation, of fragmentation, of uncertainty and so being on the forefront of that research of generating new insights and then sharing that solution with an, I don't know, altogether broken marketplace has been very rewarding and has brought me immense understanding of what people are really looking for. Because I fundamentally believe if you can change the daily employee experience for the better, you change somebody's life. I joined because I was really interested in the foreign currency market. I thought that was really exciting. While going to school, one of our executives there, Dave Pierce, was, was visiting at the U and um, gave a presentation. I thought it was a really exciting company. And so I applied and, and got the internship. That was a really good day. What I hope to accomplish next year at GPS, it's more just operational things. We're fine tuning things, we're growing. And I, I think there's a lot of exciting things the organization has. I'm also involved in a nonprofit, South Valley Services SVS. I kind of feel the same thing there. Uh, I'm new to there and I'm hoping to, to learn more. Uh, we have a lot of ambitious you know, goals to grow the organization. It's about um, just getting that much better. Success personally looks like making sure that I get to spend time with my family and I've got balance in my life. Professionally, I want to do something that matters. I worked at a dev shop before this where we built big software for lots of big companies. And it was a lot of fun, but at the end of the day, you just help big companies make more money. There's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't move you inside. At vSchool, I get to change people's lives. I get to see people who worked in a factory who now get to make six figures in the tech industry and are buying their first home or are saving up for their kids or, or hitting all kinds of important milestones. Getting to do meaningful work matters more than the making money. I just feel lucky I get to do both. My interest in business started at a really young age. When I was nine years old, my dad started me with a uh, vending machine business. He gave me two machines and he helped me to grow that to 18 machines. And so I'd, I'd say that's really where my entrepreneurial spirit uh, came from, was from my dad. Ever since then, I've been working in some fashion or, or another, whether it's uh, the candy machines or running a, a lawn mowing business um, from a young age. Uh, I got into banking when I was 16 years old and that's just continued to grow ever since then. My go-to business strategy comes from some advice I was given early in my career to 
focus on mastering your current role. That's gonna help us to feel more passionate about what we're doing, more driven in what we're doing, and it's gonna help us to grow, and we're gonna see our careers just flourish if that's really our mantra or our focus is mastering the current role that we're in. I'm really drawn to industries that have real world impact. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm working in an industry where friends, family, neighbor, peers uh, are impacted by the software, the products that I'm selling. My prior job uh, at Podium was helping do that with local business owners. My current job at Entrada is doing that with residents and property managers. And you see that throughout you know, everyday people that you interact with, which is really fun. Where I get my inspiration for creativity is probably mostly from the people that I work alongside. I think for me, I'm not the most creative person naturally, but I feel like I have a, an ability to recognize good creativity and figure out how to harness it and utilize it in the work that we're doing. Growing up in a blue collar town of 600 people, I never imagined I'd be where I am today. When I was 16, I started buying and selling cars on eBay. That experience allowed me to, to realize that I had a knack for business. I liked the thrill of making deals and creating value. And through that experience, I've uh, used that foundational knowledge to create deals and um, create value for the company I'm with today. My kids inspire me the most. Their open-mindedness and their, their curious nature make me curious myself and um, really drive me to want to learn more. Also, I, I know that every day they're watching my wife and I, looking at what we do, and I just want to be the best role model for them that I can. My parents really delayed a lot of their own dreams, their own career aspirations, just to be able to provide for me and my two brothers growing up. And it's all thanks to them that we were able to dabble in a myriad of different areas um, and explore what it is that, that got us up in the morning. I started as like a musical theater kid, a ballet dancer, an actor, had a deep passion for production. So um, I just continued to explore and learn and build. I started at Disneyland in Los Angeles and Walt Disney Imagineering. The experiences I had there and the people I worked with helped build my network, helped me to um, better understand how our industry works and the best ways to navigate it, uh, and also how to use my expertise and my creative skills in the industry. You know, so ultimately, it ended up leading me back here to the jazz. The person who inspires me the most is my wife. She works tirelessly and, and most importantly when she sees something that she needs to improve on, she focuses on it and she makes that a strength. I love that about her and, and I try to emulate that in my own life and when I see something that needs to be done and improved and put concerted effort into that to, to making it happen. I think one of my best talents is probably problem solving. It's something that I love seeing a challenge and trying to figure out how do we solve this problem? What can we do different than somebody else? What can we do different than even the way we've done it in the past to help overcome the struggle that we're having? Congratulations and welcome Megan Stetler, director of the OC Tanner Institute with OC Tanner. Congratulations. Welcome to Michael Harris, Chief Financial Officer of GPS Capital Markets. Please welcome to the stage Michael Zaro, Chief Executive Officer for B School.
Congratulations and welcome Mike Van Rosendahl, Regional President of Zions Bank. Warm welcome to Paul Schumacher, Managing Director of AREIT. <laughs> Up next is our honoree from the Utah Jazz. Welcome Peyton Adams, producer and senior director of entertainment, production, and game presentation. Let's give a very warm welcome to Remington Atwood, Chief Financial Officer for Onset Financial. another round of applause. We do have some very impressive honorees today. Right now though, time for that last $150 gift card. So grab your tickets. There we go. All right, that number is, I need to hear you. I need to make some noise if this is you. All right, four, five, nine, Five, five, seven. I hear Oz. That's the regular. Five, five, seven. Anyone? I hear a five, five, eight. That's too close, but it's not it. Oh, there we go. We got it. Come on up and get your prize. All right. Please turn your attention to the video screens for our final group of honorees. When I was 18, I had no idea what I was going to do. I thought I wanted to be a pro athlete for the rest of my life or an orthopedic surgeon, but I did know because of my mentors and, and my father uh, being a big entrepreneur that I was going to be something special. I always gravitated towards uh, business and ma mature people, and so I knew, I didn't know exactly what that looked like, but I knew I'd do something great in this life and I'm just grateful that I am where I am and I'm in the position to give back to the younger generation. I am a, a person that uses the theme win-win or no deal in almost everything that I do and in the end when it's a win-win for all parties that is the most joyful thing that I could ever experience not only as a commercial real estate broker but as a person. What drew me to marketing as a career choice is back to people. I love understanding how people tick, what their needs are, what their interests are, and helping to build products that I think meet those needs and make people happy and achieve the things that they want to in life or business. I love how dynamic the market can be. I love how buying patterns change as we evolve. Every time I complete a project that I believe is helping, whether it's businesses understand their customers better or governments understanding their people or charities understanding their donors or the people that they're, they're helping is always a very rewarding feeling for me. So being in an industry with tech that makes people understand each other more is the most rewarding part. Leadership has always been a passion of mine. It's been, you know, I believe when I, growing up, I even, you know, I was always the one that wanted to lead the team or, or also lead class projects. But once I started with KeyBank, I really noticed my passion for leadership. My parents inspire me the most. 
They have raised three children and now grandkids. They worked full time. They were also at the same time raising a family. And that's really what inspires me the most to see how present they were in all of our activities and to be able to see them manage and balance it all. Um, that is truly a gift that I am forever grateful for and they continue to inspire me to this day. So what drew me to the field of mental health and especially infant mental health, I've always loved working with kids and when I was teaching preschool, you know, 15 years ago, I was always drawn to the kids that had bigger behaviors and maybe were struggling a little bit more. Through that, I found that I was really interested in mental health and went and got my master's degree in social work and then ended up at the Children's Center. The most rewarding part about what I do is definitely seeing the kids, getting to see them smile and laugh and really have a different experience with adults than they've had in the past and be able to go see their big people and do really well in their other preschool settings. I'm most inspired by people that are thoughtful and people that are creative. When people have the ability to intuitively find out a need and then are willing to sacrifice to, to meet that need, it's very impressive to me. And I just enjoy watching creative people work. And they can look at a problem and figure out a way to solve that that other people I think just assumed was unsolvable. It's just fun to watch. I think success looks like satisfaction with your life, whether it's professionally, personally, Societally, I think if you're satisfied with where you are, with what you're doing, with how you're doing it, I don't know there's a better measure of success than that. Hopefully that aligns with contributing to society, being a good person and making a better world. But I think it's got to be the person satisfied with, deep down satisfied with where they are. I really love the work that I do. My job, I get to be at the intersection of business and politics. And I think that as we look into the future in 40 uh, and beyond, uh, I don't see that that is going to become any less kind of divisive and controversial. But if I can be doing my part to help bring folks together and do things to make uh, healthcare better, simpler, and more affordable, then that would be success for me. And that would be something that I would be looking forward to as a kind of, as I advance even further in my career. When we're able to come together and find a solution uh, legislatively or through a law or a policy change that uh, helps those individuals and all kind of voices and things can be heard, that's, that's what success is for me. I established the culture quickly by really kind of leading from the back. So I have the very Simon Sinek philosophy where kind of leaders eat last and I really believe that and implemented that and I think it made a huge difference in the culture immediately. The most rewarding thing about the industry is I love higher education. It's such a great experience to be along with people and their MBA journey. I get to see them flourish, fulfill goals that I ne that people never thought that they could overcome. And just watching people achieve their highest potential is such a rewarding experience and that's what higher education does for people. Congratulations and welcome to the stage, Ryan Flint, principal with Mountain West Commercial. Give a big round of applause for Key Bank Experience leader Sarah Chickas.
Join me in congratulating Sarah Johnson, the clinical director and therapeutic preschool program and family therapist for the Children's Center Utah. Next up, we have Skylar Tanner, shareholder with Parr, Brown, G, and Loveless. Welcome to the stage, Stephen Foxley, Director of Public Affairs and Government Relations for Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield of Utah. Final honoree of the day, please welcome the Director of Online MBA and Professional MBA for the University of Utah MBA Programs and Executive Education, Ziani Haney. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's give a big final round of applause to everyone that was recognized here today. I feel comfortable speaking for everyone when I say that we are proud of you and all of the hard work and dedication you've put into your career. All of you make Utah a better place to live. All right, we have just a few housekeeping items before we go. You may have noticed that there's a QR code in the middle of your tables. As an attendee today, Utah Business would like to offer you a complimentary one-year subscription. All you have to do is scan that code. You'll be able to complete that registration online. And in addition, Photos and videos of our honorees, you saw them like pause like this and everybody's like, what am I looking at? Those photos and the video from today will soon be posted on the Utah Business website at the bottom of the article. We also invite you to share any of those that you have taken today with us via social media by using the hashtag UB40 spelled out under 40 numbers. 40 under 40. Okay, and as a reminder, your parking is paid for, so if you didn't get a validation when you checked in, stop by the registration desk, make sure you grab one before you leave. We also want to gather your name tags because we like to recycle those, so leave those at your table or you can take them to the registration table. Once again, thank you for coming and congratulations to the 2023 40 under 40 honorees.